I really appreciate in the in the rebuilding of our district, and particularly these two buildings, is I've held a number of community meetings in this common space here. And when people come in, first of all, they aren't expecting this. This isn't what they would think in an elementary school. It's big people space too. And with just a couple shifts of, of walls and things, suddenly it's uh, it's a place where we can have adult discourse. So I like the way that the, the space can be transformed depending on the audience. And yet there's nothing more thrilling than coming in here in the morning when they're doing an all school assembly. Young kids are down below and all the older kids are up and around and you have that whole, the whole school community um, participating as a, as, a, as a group. Adults and kids usually like to connect with each other before they get to work and um, in the past kids had to wait outside in the cold because there wasn't a place for them to be and so um, they come in now they get kind of warmed up chat with their friends and then it's time to go to class and then they move to these little sub communities within the building a uh, place where the teachers are in vision are in line sight of each other uh, this building before was a series of boxes teachers were really isolated in what they did the excellent things they did were sort of unwitnessed um, and when things were going hard, they felt kind of isolated and unprotected. So um, this I like is because it breaks up a nice elementary school into small learning communities, shared resources, and, um, and it's just like, it's kind of like your home, but you're learning. I think one of the biggest changes in education over the last 10 to 15 years is uh, the movement uh, to really individualize teaching and learning, small group teaching and learning. And in the old Jackson and Roosevelt schools that were, were built uh, 100 years ago, there wasn't space to take kids um, away from the classroom and teach them. Uh, everything had to happen in the classroom or in the hallway. And now we've got uh, these learning centers that teachers can use uh, with classified staff, paraprofessionals, volunteers, and they can uh, take small groups of kids or individual students and work on their individual needs. Um, just a, a great, great learning space. Uh, the space behind me still is, is my favorite part of the school. It's, I think of it as the living room of the, of the school, and every school should have a space like this. Jackson is unique in that we have multi-layered um, reading programs, and because we, we're very good at identifying the specific, the specific needs of the children, we have a number of groups, and each group is targeted towards a select number of kids, and they're the reading level. Within the classroom it's kind of difficult, it, it's not kind of, it's very difficult to do a number of groups. With this commons area we can have four different groups taking place. I can have a group in my classroom and then we can have groups taking place in the commons area. So from that standpoint it's nice and going back to the windows I can go ahead and look out the window and I can see how it's going and if there's something that needs to be addressed I can excuse myself from the classroom, walk out and address it. We are doing a lot of small group instruction now with students and it's nice to be able to have um, places for those small groups to meet. Uh, rather than having all of the small groups meet in the classroom, which can be, um, it works okay, but it can be distracting for other students. Um, and we have classroom literacy aides that are able, and uh, parent help who are able to take the students still in uh, visual proximity to this, the teacher so we know what's going on in those different areas. They're able to take the students out to the common areas or to the small conference rooms to minimize the distractions so the students can concentrate on what uh, the learning is that they are asked to do. It's worth investing in better furniture that will last longer that fits fits the uh, needs of your space. My family is a family of teachers. They've got 60 years of experience at least. And I've seen theories come and go. Uh, and I did not want spaces that were stuck in one type of instruction. So all of our uh, common spaces have flexible furniture. So we can move cushions around, we can move tables. That way, uh, if, group, if teachers aren't doing the same things we're doing 20 years from now, they'll be able to use the space differently.